Well, the plan is to re rebuild a new gallery on the site of the existing gallery. So as you suggested, we've looked at a number of planning iterations and possible locations, but have now firmly settled on this spot. What is it, I mean, what's led to that? Because, I mean, there were some pretty grand ideas, weren't there, you know, on the side of the lake and, and so on and so forth. Well, what's, what's made Council decide, no, the best thing to do is to stay where we are, but to, but just to, to redevelop this site? We still have grand ideas, Jeremy, uh, but they'll be on this site rather than down by the lake or in any other locations. Um, we felt, as we know, galleries attract tourists and attract large numbers of visitors to your town. And we felt it was really important to bring those visitors into the CBD to support our local businesses. Now, on top of that, there's some economic benefits for council in terms of the cost of uh, future construction by preserving the steel frame that we've got here or elements of the steel frame. So you've managed to make this um, into a much larger development really haven't you? The, the gallery has become a, a, a part of what's going to be a much bigger thing. You're exactly right Jeremy. The gallery will be an anchor for three projects which will in many ways be related and connected. Uh, other than the gallery we're also redesigning the CBD streetscape so all our footpaths and, and facilities and amenity we have in town need urgent upgrade we're looking at entering a design period for that and in addition our car park at the rear of the existing gallery here we're looking to make that into a town square concept so i mean if this all happens this is going to be probably what the biggest thing that's happened in hamilton is it for for, for years probably i did say at the time probably nothing nothing bigger since guilfoyle first drafted the design for our botanic gardens, it really is significant. It's a really generational opportunity to transform our town and transform not just how our community experience it, but how our visitors experience it as well. How do you make this happen? So you, you've said, yep, we're going to do this. Now, now what? Uh, so we'll go into an extensive design period on, on all three elements of the project, which are the gallery, the streetscape project, and the development of our property at 90 Lonsdale Street into a new library, digital hub, and, and, and office space. Uh, from there, we consult with the community on our plans, particularly with the gallery. We'll go to the community at a couple of different iterations of those plans to get input, get their thoughts. We're very lucky to have a large, loyal, uh, friends network with the gallery uh, who will definitely provide strong input into the planning process. We also need to be talking to philanthropists, state government, federal government about the fundraising we need to do to develop the gallery. Yeah, because none of this is, is set in concrete as far as that's concerned, is it? Uh... No, the, the projects have to be funded. Uh, in a rate capping environment, uh, council couldn't fund them, uh, but we've been working hard on building those relationships. They're going to support us and we're, we've got reason to be confident that we will be able to pull the money together. Joshua, what's the um, thought been like or the feeling been like at the gallery since this was announced? Has there been a bit of a buzz about, you know, <laughs> what might happen here? Well, it's been really fantastic. So it, it was announced in November, yeah. and since then we've had um, many different stakeholders come in from the Trust to the Friends stating how this is very, very much needed, not only for our collection, but for our audience experience. So from that point, it has been um, a height of um, energy around this project. <laughs> and anticipation, possibly. Anticipation, most certainly. <laughs> so where we're standing now, is there any thoughts, I mean, is there any preliminary idea about what's going to be where, like where we are now outside the gallery? Will, will this still be the gallery entrance, do we expect, or, or no one knows? Uh, look, I think we're open for anything that our architects might, might want to show us as concepts. Uh, but fundamentally, we, I would say yes to that question, that the entrance would remain on Brown Street. What we've done so far is what we would describe as a spatial analysis, so that we're satisfied we can meet our needs spatially on this site. Uh, and then from there, we're really developing a brief to go to architects or will no doubt start the creative process. So you, so you mentioned that there's a, like a shell or a, a structure that you can preserve. Uh, how much more of what's here can you retain and how much, you know, how much, how much will go? I oh, look at this stage, uh, just about all of it will go, but there is, as I said, a real economic benefit in keeping the steel frame and we can build whatever we want around that steel frame. The architects have looked at it, we've done some investigations and we're quite confident about that. Yeah. So how, how much bigger is the gallery going to be uh, compared to what we, where we are now? So the current gallery is 577 square metres um, and the new gallery will be 5,870 odd square metres. Oh, so it's a substantial difference, but if we take you up later and show you our 
collection room where we store our collection, you'll suddenly get a sense of why we need that space. And it's really important that, this, that we have space for the community to interact, for the community to be part of the gallery experience. And whether that's participating in art or just gathering within the art gallery, um, artists and residents, etc., they're all really important outcomes to really improve our community's experience and engagement with the gallery. So it's not just about having more wall space, Joshua, it's about being able to do other things as well. Exactly. So it'll be integrated into the everyday life of the community. So the gallery will be not only a reflection of the culture of the community, but it will be um, somewhere you, a local would come every every couple of days, essentially. <laughs> every couple of days. Every couple of days. <laughs> so whether you like it or not, <laughs> this is going to be it, part of your life. It'll be, a, it'll be a meeting point. It will be like a cultural hub for the region. Tony, tell us a bit more about what else is going to change then or what else you're hoping is going to change. So you mentioned you're talking about everything, streetscapes and so on. So once again, look, if we look at the road here, uh, the streetscape here, what's, what, what's your vision as to what might change here? I think when we started looking last year at Hamilton, we're really happy with what we describe as the bones, so the street network. Uh, if you were going to redesign Hamilton, I think you'd redesign exactly what we've got. Uh, but the Mission Brown Brick that we have as our footpath is, uh, was probably out of trend about 20 years ago. <laughs> it's a maintenance nightmare. Um, but we really want to facilitate people coming to the CBD, not just because they have to to shop, but because there's an experience for them. They want to hang out here. They want to be part of the environment. So we want to activate our spaces with outdoor art, which is a connection with the gallery. Uh, and we want really great areas that people could just come sit, have a coffee, meet other people, talk, sit, read a book. But support our businesses is our most important mission with the streetscape so that they've got options with the way they conduct their business, whether it's outdoor dining, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, wider footpaths or, or whatever it is that we end up doing you know, a primary consultation on that will be with businesses. Well, we've wandered around the side of the building past the uh, Performing Arts Centre. It's a beautiful drizzly morning in Hamilton. We might not talk too long here or we'll get saturated. Uh, Tony, just worth mentioning, so the, the Performing Arts Centre itself is not, um, that, that that's not being touched? No, that's correct. That's saying the new art gallery will, will wrap around the Performing Arts Centre. So where we are here, though, so this is the car park. There's the old Mitre 10 store there, which I think, so that's the building that Council's Reach recently acquired, is that right? Yeah, Council acquired the old Mitre 10 building um, and we were developing a new library, gallery uh, and office space on that side and digital hub over there, mm. which will free up the entire site where the gallery is uh, for our new gallery. Okay. And how badly needed is all of what you've just mentioned there as well? <laughs> oh, substantially. So uh, we've got an awesome gallery t uh, library team. Um, who really do a great job and run fantastic school holiday programs which is sold out in two minutes. Mm. Uh, we really need a library space that's double what we've got. Um, so this is an opportunity to address that as well. And the other key element is a digital hub. So we've done a deep analysis into the need for a digital hub. Educational attainment rates are low, business needs better, high broadband access uh, you know, from time to time and we want to provide that with our digital hub. And the, and the car park then, which we're surrounded by at the moment, then what, what are you hoping or what are you, what, are you, what are you seeing here in however many years' time we're talking? Let me say first, <laughs> we're always cautious about taking car parking spots <laughs> out, but uh, we're very confident with the really good redesign of the rest of the car park here, uh, we could preserve as many spots as what we'll remove here. But we see this as a really important space that we can activate through having outdoor performing arts, uh, possibly even a stage on the side of our performing arts building here mm. to run outdoor uh, events for the community. Uh, you know, we're lucky to have a really great choir, uh, orchestra, uh, and a lot of other musical performers in our community. We'd like to give them a platform that they can during all year really, perform outdoors, the community can gather as they please, we can hold events here, etc. We had the Christmas parade recently, it was absolutely packed, but everyone was jammed onto footpaths. It'd be great to have a space like this here to really do things for the community at. So, Tony, I suppose one, one criticism that people might have, and I think we're seeing a bit of this in Warnable at the moment, is there's often this thought when we talk about galleries that, that, that yeah, there's only a certain portion of society that, that engage with these institutions that think they're worth spending money on and so on. Is it, is From that point of view, are you, are you anticipating a bit of a hard sell here for the wider Hamilton community? Well, I, I think the sell is easier if we're raising the money externally and we're not spending rate, rate funding. Uh, but I think importantly, galleries are really representations of your heritage, your history, your landscape. They're really who we are as a community. And, and 
we have a very strong belief that they're for everybody in your community, not just a portion of your community. And we think our new gallery will really enable that. We want to be able to run programs that are targeted at and engage everybody in the community, not just people who want to come in and look at a McCubbin or, or you know, some high-end piece of art. But we want our gallery to inspire people. We want our, you know, our, our community to bring visitors every time they visit us to the gallery. We want it to be the first port of call. Joshua, I'm sure you agree. You're nodding vigorously there. I am nodding vigorously. Um, and look, over the last 12 months, the gallery has really engaged with families and school groups and children. So I think um, it is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Art galleries, particularly regional art galleries across Australia, are for everyone to engage with. There we go. Joshua White, Director of the Hamilton Art Gallery. And also Tony Doyle, we heard from there, who is the CEO of Southern Grampian Shire, talking about those plans, big plans for, well, not just a new Hamilton Art Gallery, but also a new library, a new cinema, new council offices, a new town square. The streetscape's also going to be changed. It's going to be a massive project for Hamilton if it all goes ahead. And of course, it'll take many years, I'm sure, as well to achieve all of those things. But, uh, well, looking forward to, uh, to watching it happen.